my chosen ones. I don't think I filmed a wrap up in months. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know when it was that I last did one. I just. I have a love hate relationship with wrap ups. I like documenting what I've read, sharing my thoughts with you guys, and just kind of having that nice sort of like wrapped up. You know. The problem is, I have a terrible memory, which is why this idea might be awful, but I just. I, ca I can't seem to find the right balance. I feel like if I love a book, I just talk about how much I love it without giving you any information for like 10 minutes. If I hate a book, I probably remember more and go into detail and then just shoot it on a rant review. And then there's the books that I feel kind of meh about. And I'm kind of like, when I do a monthly wrap up, like I want to tell you every book I read in that month. But I feel bad if I just kind of brush over it and then I end up with a really long video that I don't like editing and then I just feel like isn't worth watching and then you can just tell when that content goes out that like the creator isn't interested and it it ain't what we're here for. So Hannah from Ledette M has recently been doing something called the potluck wrap up. Now I'm pretty sure she got this from someone else. I'm not sure who but I first saw it on her channel and I was like that is genius. So essentially the potluck wrap up, Hannah has a teapot. Inside this empty, well it's not an empty teapot now because it's got things in it, but inside this teapot are bits of paper with the title of the books that she read in it. And she has 20 minutes to pull out a book, tell you her thoughts, pull out another book. And she's basically going to try and get through as many as she can before the timer goes. And what's really interesting is obviously you might not get to all of the books which means the next month for your February wrap up, you have February and January. Obviously for me, I didn't do it last month, so I'm doing January and February. So it's gonna be interesting, because I have like 32 books, and I only get 20 minutes, so that's less than a minute per book. There's definitely books in here, ones that I read in January, that I'm probably gonna go, yeah, I read that, and just kinda move on, because I just don't have thoughts. And I just think it'll be really interesting. I think it's gonna be useful for future like unhauls. I might get to December and still have books from January and I'll be like, do you know what? I still own this and I don't care. Like, do you know like, cause if there's books, like there's, there's a book I read in February that I really wanna tell you about and I know that if I don't get it, I'm probably just gonna tell you about it anyway. So I think if I get to December and there's books from like January that I still haven't like wrapped up, should probably just get rid of them. <laughs> So with that said, I am going to get my timer ready. I was only going to do 15 minutes just because I want to try and get shorter videos, but I reminded myself there's like 32 books. So we're going to go for the 20 minutes. We're just going to get through as many books as we possibly can. However, I don't have a teapot and I didn't want to go downstairs and use a kitchen pot. So I'm using a hat. This is a steampunk top hat. I was about to turn it around and show you and realise that the, the books will fall out. The, the book... The bits of paper with the book titles. Oh. It's only 20 minutes, Emma. We can do this. So I'm just going to set my timer and we're going to go for it. So... Boof. Okay, the first book that has come out is Valley of Lost Secrets. This was an audiobook that I listened to. It's set in Wales, it's about like um, evacuees. I don't even remember what the secrets were. I think I gave it three stars. I was gonna try and like look at my, my sheet but it might be a bit too much time. Yeah, three stars. I don't care for it. If it had been a physical, I would unhaul. Next we have The Inheritance Games, which I read physically and I have here. This was a very high four star read. This is a mystery. This girl basically, out of the blue, finds out that she's got some like billionaire's inheritance. She doesn't know the guy, she's not related to him, like she he just randomly gives all his fortune to her. So she has to like go and the stipulation in the will is that she has to live in the house for a year. Um, there are four brothers who are meant to be the heirs that are obviously like why have you got this and um, the family are like not happy about it. 
it's just it's so good and it's it's like what 300 odd pages 375 pages but it's got 90 chapters so all the chapters are like under four pages so you just fly through it and there's going to be a second book coming out in like september or something like that autumn 21 so i'm very excited tiny pretty things and sequel so in january or was it no nope, both in february <laughs> in february i decided to reread tiny pretty things and then read the sequel to the, in the final book in the duology um shiny broken pieces i gave i think i gave tiny pretty things four stars and shiny broken pieces got three stars i listened to them bo both both on audio so I previously read Tiny Pretty Things and I liked it. I think it got four stars then as well. Shiny Broken Pieces, it was good, but like I was kind of over it and by by about halfway through that audiobook I was like, I kinda just wanna go and watch the Netflix show. So like it it was good and you know it's it's ballet school, it's very dramatic. There's a lot of like eating disorder kind of stuff going on and like people being obsessed with their weight. So it, it can be a bit triggering and I wanna say they were written back in like 2017 2015 and 2016 so you know it's kind of dated in terms of like i don't want to say dated in terms of representation but i feel like up until like 2018 19 they didn't really do as much research into making things quite as accurate I guess I don't know or at least they didn't really deal with it quite as sensitively which doesn't bother me like I don't mind the really like blunt sort of like yeah like calorie counting here's exactly what I'm eating but I can see why it would kind of bother others so I want to watch the Netflix show then we have Blood Moon this is somewhere down here I think this was my first read of the year no it wasn't it was my second read of the year I bloody read this with Karis and Hannah it is a novel in verse and it's about a girl whose first sexual experience ends up happening when her period comes and it kind of gets spread around her school and there's also like other like dramatic stuff going on there's a very kind of intense scene um spoilers where people are like telling her to like kill herself or like saying that they like hope she gets raped or something i can't exactly remember but i remember being like whoa that's intense but this was a high four star again i've not had a lot of five stars this year yet this was a very kind of deep one and i do think it's an important one it does does discuss you know a really important topic you know period sex online shaming all of that so this was a good read next is i do not trust you by people apparently i gave it four stars i i listened to the audiobook and i couldn't tell you what happened so next is harley in the sky oh where's my book gone so i buddy read harley in the sky with robbie i also have a harley in the sky marble bookmark that i designed if anyone's interested in the illustrations they're not on etsy yet but i'll get there i wanted to reread this so bad it came out in march last year i have a tattoo i go on about this book i fucking love it robbie loved it so much that he couldn't actually talk to me about it afterwards he was like i just can't speak and he still hasn't all he said is he really liked it and i'm like okay i guess i trust you on that oh this is a book that could make me ramble i'm not even gonna tell you anything about it it's about a girl whose parents run a circus in las vegas she wants to be an aerialist they want her to go to school so she runs away with a rival circus and it's just oh, it's so good and i honestly resonate so much with harley like all of Akemi's characters, a little piece of them feels like me, but Harley just so much so. Like, I see so much of me in her. And I just want to, like, pull her aside and talk to her and kind of be like, I think the reason you are this way is because of these things. And, like, it's fine. We can work together and help. And, oh, I love this book. If you haven't read Akemi Don Bowman, read Akemi Don Bowman. Read Harley in the Sky. Mystery of Black Hollow Lane. This is one that is here. This is a middle grade that I read just at the end of February and I gave five stars to. Harley in the Sky was five stars as well, obviously. This is a mystery and it was just so fun. It is set in this weird, like, old boarding school. It's kind of reminiscent to me of Stags by Emmy Bennett, but middle grade. There's like a secret society kind of going on and there's like just little mysterious things and there's really good friendships. I don't know what just fell there. Hopefully nothing important. But oh, it's just, 
it was just so good again there's there is a sequel that i think is already out so i need that instantly i i love this next up is burnout survival kit guide thing this is a little hardback that i could be bothered moving my chair to access that i think i gave four stars to i half buddy read this with hannah in january and it's essentially just a little self-help book on how to deal with burnout specifically within like the workplace and it does reference both being within a workplace and also working from home working for yourself and it has a lot of good tips like a lot of it's kind of common sense but i'm that person that even if i know things like there's one tip in it that says something like you know learn to say no you know if you get a lot of clients and you're busy like say no it's okay like i know you want money but you're gonna burn out don't do it and that makes perfect sense and I know that but just having someone else point it out is really fucking helpful. There's also like a page where she has like someone's like five daily stretches. Like obviously yoga is not for everyone. Yoga that also doesn't solve life's problems but they're really quite good stretches. I've done them a couple times, not daily, literally maybe like twice. And like they're good. It's there and they've got little illustrations so you know what you're supposed to be doing. It's just a really good little book just to have there just remind yourself like you know take it easy but I wouldn't say it was life-changing next is Mr Galliano's Circus which is by Enid Blyton I listened to the story collection it was it was entertaining it was you know blight in you know like it wasn't groundbreaking but it was just fun and really sort of childish and whim like childish in a good way like you know very kind of old-fashioned fairy tale just fun and I <laughs> all right I'm really bad when I listen to audiobooks for associating them with what I was doing at the time so all I can think of when I think of that book is this is me wasting time all I can think of is when I was playing house flipper on my switch which if you don't have it you basically just go into these like dilapidated houses clean them and redecorate it's brilliant next is castle school for troubled girls this is another boarding school book i seem to be reading a lot of sort of boarding school stuff at the minute i think okay i think there's like what four five i just i like the vibe and this one was i didn't love it i didn't hate it i'm trying to see what i gave it i don't even know i gave it three stars Alyssa shine mel i've read two books from there now i read them both in february and one was audio this one was ebook it's all right they try to kind of be thriller dark contemporary but they they don't really have much substance this one's this girl has to go to the castle school for troubled girls there's a mystery that's not really a mystery because it basically as soon as it's like appears everyone else is like how did you not know this so it's like oh it, it's just a, this school where girls with issues go um again there's like eating disorder stuff going on and just it was fine next is in paris with you which was my first read of the year this is a another novel in verse again i love them this is marketed as YA. I picked this up in the YA section. It is not a YA. It's about this woman who's like 30 or whatever and this guy, I think she knew him when they were kids and then they sort of like bump into each other again when they're adults. So while there are sections of the book where they are young, the majority of this is when they're older. So this is very much adult or new adult fiction if you really think that it's younger. It's not a YA, it doesn't read like YA, it wasn't as enjoyable as YA for me. So it was only a four star and that was me kind of pushing it because I was disappointed. If I was rating it completely like honestly at the time it would be three stars. Even now looking back I'm still kind of like oh three stars. But I gave it four because I know I was just really disappointed because it wasn't a YA, it was an adult romance which is not my thing. So I rated it a little bit more subjectively because also I don't like starting the year off on anything less than a four so. <laughs> Our next book is Show Us Who You Are. Sorry, that's the book I really wanted to talk about. I read Show Us Who You Are by Elle McNichol and this book fucking destroyed me. It was a five star, it is probably my best book of the year. If you don't know, Elle McNichol wrote A Kind of Spark, which was about the girl who's autistic. Elle is also autistic. This has Cora, who is autistic. You're seeing a theme, because guess what? I'm also autistic. Elle just writes the most amazing neurodivergent characters. This book also has an ADHD character who I adore. There's a certain chapter in here which 
killed me. I literally was watching Gavin's sprints last night and I was like, have you got to this chapter yet? And he was like, no. And I was just watching him and he was, he, we had to take a break. He was not okay. He then finished the book and I was like, fucking told you. Like, it's, it's a lot. I would say there's like a trigger warning for said scene. Um, it's hard because like, it's one of those where like it's not like oh someone's gay like it's not so it's like a spoiler but it's also a trigger so like I don't want to say it here but if anyone's curious it does involve sort of like a car accident um and there's also grief I suppose because um the main character's mum had is like dead um she had an illness that isn't named um, but she dies before the book starts so like that's kind of a theme in it so you know if anyone wants to know more you can DM me but oh this was incredible, absolutely incredible. Like, I just, mm. Next is Last Chance Hotel. This is another middle grade. This is a mystery. I really, really like this one as well. I'm trying to look quickly. Four stars. It's about a boy who works as like a chef and a housekeeper and everything in this weird hotel. And then these weird people come to stay and it's just a bit strange and stuff happens and it's a mystery so I can't tell you much but it was so good and I think there's two more books in the sort of, I don't know if it's a series or a companion but either way I want it. I want it all. I want it all. What is next? Next we have Sad Ghost Club. This I absolutely freaking loved. I'm sick of this from Hachette. Um, it's a graphic novel about a sad ghost and I just, oh it was beautiful. It was just so much fun. The Sad Ghost Club actually exists. They have a website, you can buy their art. You can actually buy a tattoo token so you can pay £15 and use any of their artwork to get a tattoo and I was like, I know what I'm doing when the tattoo parlour opens but I do have a blog to your post. I was going to do a video but January was a lot and so it was the beginning of February so I only did a blog to your post on emmanovella.co.uk. I will link it below if I remember but yeah love this so freaking much. I am running out of time and I want to get through so many books. Next we have Lost Tide Warriors. I believe this is the sequel to some other warrior book thing it's it's a sequel to I don't know what it's called Sor the Stormkeeper's Island it was all right I don't really remember anything then we have Echo this was an ebook that I was gifted by the author because one of the characters is autistic it's a strange one there's kind of like paranormally mystery stuff going on um kind of sci-fi and the autistic character while it, he's in it he's not massively in it in the first book so I do have the second one now it was enjoyable you know I know a lot of people shy away from self-published but it was really good it's confusing but like good confusing then we have the Halifax Slasher this was a podcast I listened to two podcasts in January this one was my second one and I didn't enjoy it as much it just didn't have the same vibe it was more like someone reiterating a story rather than like an investigation um, that is partly because it's a much older case and I don't want to spoil it but like when you find out like what happened it it makes sense whereas like with the first one I listened to it was like an unsolved crime so anyway moving on we have Spell Slinger yes the book that I got <laughs> I now have three copies of I have this copy which has been rat bitten I have an arc and I have a hardback this surprised me I gave this four stars I really want to keep reading it I did not think I could like magic this much. This is very much a sort of a lore high fantasy. So we're in a world where like magic exists and these people do magic and blah 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 and there's like battles and duels and all this. But it's kind of chill. It's not as like intense and political as some high fan. It's not really political at all. Well there is politics but anyway it was so good. Moving on we have three and a half minutes. Let's go let's go let's go. Then we have We Played With Fire. Another one I had a blog tour for. I will link the post. It was alright. I wanted to love it. I gave it three stars. It's about the Fox sisters who really existed. They kind of pioneered spiritualism. The book was fine. It could have been a bit darker and more mysterious for my liking but. Then we have Girl Gone Viral which is by Arvin Amadi. I got this at BookCon nearly two years ago and this has also been chewed by rats. What a fucking shock. So I met Arvin. I love him. He's amazing. As you can see my book is signed. This is a sci-fi. It's this girl who they live in this world where like it's like social media is all done through like VR and stuff and they make this really successful show to try and win this competition. There's a, a bit of a mystery going on. 
it was good. I mean, it wasn't groundbreaking. I'm not mind blown. It was three stars, but you know, I'm, I'm glad I finally read it. Next up, we have Daughter of the Burning City. So, finally got around to this after freaking years. I have got this in an owl crate. This is sort of circusy, like love a circus book. This was really, really good. I gave this one four stars. It was like an interesting pace. Like it was fast, but it wasn't overly fast, but like it wasn't slow and like, I don't even know anymore. If you haven't read this, you need to read it. It's just got such a good atmosphere. It could so easily be a series, but like it's not. And I just, oh, it was so good. Oh, I'm running out of space and I'm running out of time and I'm doing, so oh, that they, they fell. Next is West Cork. This is the other podcast I was telling you about. It's about a crime that happened in West Cork and it was just really fascinating and a really well done audiobook. It's on Audible, so is the other one. That's why they count as books because they're on Goodreads, so. Next we have The Binding. I'm kinda gonna brush past this. I started reading it physically, hated it. Listened to the audiobook, didn't really give a shit. Basically just listened to it to finish it because I was buddy reading with Robbie and then as I was about to finish it, she came out as like a fucking transphobe and a turb. A turb? A turf, so. Yeah. Danger to Herself and Others. That's the other Alicia Shinemel book, which was kind of similar. Like, it, it was a little bit more mysterious, but I listened to the audiobook and I, I don't really remember what happened. Then we have The Selection. I listened to that on audio and I was so obsessed with it. Like, I did not think I would like it. I thought it was going to be trashy. It's not trashy. Like, it's very of its era, but it was good. So, like, if you have it on your, like, TB, TB, TBR, I can't speak. If you have it on your TBR, do it. Give it a go. Like, it's worth it, I think. Then we have Orphan X, another audiobook. I've had the physical for ages. Oh my god, I've nearly gotten through everything. Let's do it. 40 seconds. Uh, I pretty much read it just to read it. Didn't give a shit. It was meh. Then we have the Mina Mystery books. I was gifted both of these. The This is book one and book two from Sweet Cherry Publishing. Book two just came out. These aren't quite middle grade. They're more kids books because they have the massive font and stuff. They're pretty basic mysteries. Mina's a little bit of an interesting character. Like, she's not the nicest. <laughs> but, you know, it's a kid's book. It, it is what it is. Ah, uh, 20 seconds and three books. Then we have Dearest Josephine, an audiobook that I literally remember nothing about apart from parallel timelines. Then we have Ascension, which was probably my favourite freaking read. It was so much fun. And I'm going to come back to it because I just want to quickly say I read The Cane Warriors because there's my timer. But I've already started talking about it so I can finish. <laughs> the Cane Warriors was given to me by Robbie, I decided to listen to the audiobook, which was really interesting because I, I try to remember exactly where it's set. Um, I know it's set on a plantation, um, but they actually have an accent, which I found really, like, it just immersed you a lot more. I didn't love the book, but I did appreciate the sort of education that it gave me. And just to go back to Ascension, because I, <laughs> I totally cheated there, I love this so much. It is a sci-fi, it's about these characters going into space, like they're gonna colonize Mars, and it was just, it's so good. I literally can't tell you anything. The friendship, is there romance? There is, because it's six girls and six boys who are like going to go and colonize Mars. They're not even like trained astronauts, they've only been in training for a year. But it's also like a dating show, um, so it's a reality TV show. It's like a big brother in space, but then they get to meet like one on one because the boys and girls are separate, and then once a week or whatever, once a day, one of each of them gets to go and meet. It, it's a whole thing, uh, but it was really good. So, yeah, my hat is empty. I'm quite excited, so um, I can wear it now. Yeah, that is everything. I'm like looking. I'm like, are we sure I didn't forget something? But no, I spoke about all. 32 books that I have read in 2021 within 20 minutes. I mean, I spoke about them. I at least said the title and then moved on if I didn't care. Oh, I'm really glad Th that I'm, I'm way too competitive. So, you know, so much for me saying, oh, I don't want to do monthly wrap ups when I've basically done it because I just did two months in one. So I hope that was entertaining. That's all I have to say. My head is too big for hats. <laughs> so that is everything I read. I'm so, I'm so thrilled I got through them all. But yeah, that is, that's it. I'm now gonna go and tidy, so. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and I'll see you in my next video. Mm -hmm.